Hello and welcome to the second video in our webcast series on the topic of orthographic projection. In our previous video we were looking at projection systems in general, so in this video we're going to look at specifically orthographic projection and how we get our orthographic views from a 3D object. So we're going to first of all begin by just looking at what orthographic projection actually is. Well, orthographic actually comes from the Greek words ortho and graphic which means correct view and that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a correct or accurate view or representation of an object. So how we do this is by taking a three-dimensional object and breaking it down into a series of connected two-dimensional views. And why would we want to do this? Well, if you look at, say, this 3D view of, a, say, a Lego figure here, you know, you can say, well, okay, I, I know what that is looking at this three-dimensional view. But if you wanted to make this piece, none of the shapes that we see here are true shapes. This circle here isn't actually drawn as a circle. And that's grand if you're quite artistic, but it can be quite difficult to draw um, unless you kind of have an artistic eye. And even from that, to measure from that, well, we're not able to do that. Likewise, if we were to um, relate all the information of the object, well, if we, this is what we would look at. The visible part of the object and the hidden part. And all of a sudden we can see there's a, a real overload of information there. So it's quite difficult to work from. What's simpler then is to break it down into a series of 2D views, like so, looking in from different directions. And these are our orthographic views. And just to have a closer look at that, um, each view will have only two dimensions. So our f looking in from the front here, we have our height, we have our width, but no information about the depth. Likewise, looking from the side, we have information about the height and the depth, but no information about the width. And looking from above, we have the width and we have the depth, but no information about the height. So for our orthographic views, we need to have at least a minimum of two views to accurately represent the object. And generally speaking, we, we include three, just to give a full, easier to read impression of the object. Now, the names of each of these views, um, looking in from the front, we have called the front elevation. Looking in from the top, we have the plan view, and you think of a house, so you know, we have the plans of a house, which is literally the house looking from above. So that's our plan view. Likewise, looking in from the side, we have our end elevation, or our end view. So there are three views which make up our primary orthographic views, the main views that we'll be dealing with. So that's what our orthographic actually is. Let's just have a look at how we get these views, such that they're all connected and tied together. So if you remember um, back from our previous video, if we want to get a projection of an object, we need three components. We need to have a viewing direction, we need to have the object, and then we need to have a plane to project onto. So we're going to put this into practice here to get our orthographic views. So we're starting off here with our viewing direction, looking in, in this case, from the front, and then we're going to create our plane to project onto. Now, what we want to do once we have our three components is we want to decide what am I actually going to see looking in from this direction. So this is the surface that we're going to be able to see. That's the visible surface when we're going to look in from that direction. And we're going to project that straight back onto our vertical plane. So that's our front elevation, like so. Um, looking from above then to get our plan view, again we have our viewing direction. We're going to have our horizontal plane in this particular case. So our horizontal plane, um, or you can think of it as the ground. And here we have our two surfaces that we're going to be able to see looking in from that direction. So like before, we're going to project them down onto the horizontal plane to give us the plan view. The same thing applies looking in from the side. We have our viewing direction. We have our end vertical plane this time. And we're going to look at our two surfaces that we see here. And we're going to project them onto our end vertical plane to give us our end elevation or end view. Um, same thing applies to get our second end view looking in from the opposite side. We're going to look in from this direction. Here we have a second end vertical plane. Now, just one little thing I'd like to mention here about this. Um, when I look in from this direction here, I'm going to be able to see this rectangle. So I'm seeing this back end here. Um, so I, that's just going to be represented by a rectangle. But there is other parts of the object that are there, but I can't see because this part is in the way. So like this line here, for example. So this line here is going to be, um, is part of the piece, but looking from this direction, we can't see it. But in orthographic, we represent all information. So we represent that with a dashed line or a hidden line. So we'll see that here now. So we can see there's our plane or our surface that we can see. And here's our surface that is there, but we can't see. But we're going to project both of them onto the plane. And there we can see there's our dashed line there. So it's a dash space, dash spaced. And that represents a hidden line on our object. So all information gets represented. 
And um, what we're going to do next then is we're going to take our three dimensional object here and we're going to fold it out so that it's flat on our sheet because that's what we have to achieve. We have to be able to draw this flat on a two dimensional sheet. So the way we do that is we take each of our planes, so like our vertical plane and our horizontal plane, and we hinge it from the line where the two meet. So we're going to hinge our horizontal plane from this line here. Same thing applies with our end vertical plane, that's going to be hinged by this line here and our end vertical plane this side gets hinged here and all our planes are hinged back off of our vertical plane. So this is exactly what we're going to see here. All of them hinged back and we can see here they are flattened out on one surface. So that's going to be our sheet. So this is the image that we see on our sheet. Each of our views, all of them connected. So now we have a system to create our orthographic views. Um, for our next slide then we're going to look at how we actually go about drawing this on our sheet, on your sheet of paper. So here we have our three-dimensional object. When you're starting your orthographic views you can start off by just drawing in a ground line, or sort of a baseline here, and that's known as the XY line. So that's just going to be our starting base point. Um, we want to start off, in this case, looking drawing in our elevation. And generally speaking, start off by drawing in the view where it best gives an idea of the shape of the object. So this shape here of this object is generally like an L shape on its side. So we're going to look straight in at the red surface here to get that idea. So we have our direction. We have our plane. So that's our vertical plane. And we're going to project each of our edges back parallel with our direction onto the plane, giving us our front elevation. So on our image here, there's our plane, just shade it in. You don't need to draw that, but just to represent it. And from our dimensions in the question, we're able to draw our front elevation. Same thing applies then when it comes to our plan view. We're looking from above this time, and we're going to have our horizontal plane that we're going to project onto. Now I'm just going to turn the transparency on this so we can see what's going, to, what's going on. We're going to, again, project our image down onto the horizontal plane. So there it is in 3D. Here it is in 2D here. So there's our plan view on our horizontal plane. And what happens is that plane gets hinged back and there's the image been hinged back as well so that it's flat on our sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to literally hinge this here. So here's our ground. So this is our plane seen looking straight in at it. We're going to hinge that down. So our lines just appear to continue straight down here. Um, for our plan view here, it doesn't really matter how far it is away from this vertical plane to start with. Um, so I'm going to just make that maybe 20 millimeters, just for convenience. So there is our plan view drawn in. So our plan view completed, we can go on and we can draw in our end view. So looking in from the left hand side here, our plane is going to appear on the right hand side, the far side of the object. So just remember that when you look in from the left hand side of the object, the image that we're going to draw is going to appear on the right hand side. So there is our plane in 3D, here it is in two dimensions. So, and this is what's known as the Y, Y line. And just a quick look at that. The line here from here down to here represents this edge here, from the top corner here down to the ground. And from here to here represents from our, uh, our edge here of our plane looking from above. So even though it's one line, it actually represents two different parts of that same plane. So. As we before, we're going to project all our surfaces back in line with our viewing direction, giving us our end elevation, or our end view, and we're going to hinge that. So here it is in 2D, being projected onto the plane. Here it is in plan, been projected onto the plane. So next we're going to hinge our plane back, same with our image, and that's our flattened out, unfolded um, representation. So we're going to repeat that process. So each of these lines going back in elevation are going to appear to move straight across, and in plan view, we're going to have this arc here. And the center point for our arc is going to be on this join between our YY line and our XY line. So you can see there is our image been folded out. And we take them up here like that. So this is what we mean by connected views. We don't have to remeasure these pieces here. All the heights have been gotten from our elevation, and all the widths have been transferred across from our plan view. So this view here, our end view, is actually connected to our two views. And that's one of the great advantages of orthographic projection. So that's our image been hinged out, and there we are having our end view. The same thing applies then lastly with our second end view looking in from the far side. Again, we have our direction, we have our plane, and here we're just going to represent it in here with our Y1, Y1 line, just to give it a different name. And like before, we project in line with our line of sight, and we're going to create our image. So again, projecting onto the plane in elevation and in plan. And like before, we're going to hinge it back 
off of our vertical plane. So there is our image and note the way we have our hidden detail here because we're looking at this green edge here and we need to represent this line that we can't see with our hidden detail. So as before we're going to use our arc and our continuation of our lines here to give us the end view of the object. So that's it been hinged out and there is our uh, second end elevation. So there's each of our views then for our orthographic views of that object um, and how they all tie together. Um, the next video is going to look at different ways to tie our views together, just trying to make life a little bit simple and giving you a couple of tips to maybe save you some time. But um, hopefully this video has been of some help to help you understand where we get our views from, from our orthographic projection. So as always, I hope this has been of some use to you and stay tuned to the rest of our videos and uh, thank you very much.